Hey everyone, I'm Helen and welcome to today's class. This will be a beginner to maybe intermediate kind of level flow class, but just go with it. And we'll be focusing on sukha and stira. And if you're not familiar with those concepts, stira means like steadiness and sukha means ease and sweetness. And when we've got the combination of those two, so it's a bit like strength and flexibility. When we have the combination of those two in our poses, they flow so much easier and we enjoy them and experience them a lot better. You can also apply this concept to life, things that you go through in life. Do you have that balance between steadiness and ease? So that's something to think about as we move through the class. You might need a couple of blocks. We will be doing some balancing poses, but we'll also be getting deep into the body, moving around a bit, challenging our flexibility and trying to grab hold of those qualities in equal amounts. Okay, we're going to start standing up. So come to the top of the mat. I will face you for now, but you can be facing the top of your mat, bringing the feet underneath the hips, spreading the toes and getting that equal weight in all the parts of the foot, igniting the inner arches, the ankles, the knees are stacked over the ankles, hips over the knees, shoulders come up back and down, palms are facing forward, chin parallel to the earth, crown to the sky, and if it feels good in your body, you can close the windows of the eyes, start to settle, bring your awareness to the parts of your foot that are in contact with the earth, seeing if you've got an equal spread of weight across them, how are your toes? Are you gripping into the mat? Tuning into the breath. Feeling a lightness in the body. Maybe a sweet smile flickers across your face. Would you thank yourself for taking a moment for you? A little bit of self-care, something nourishing and nurturing for your body, your heart and your mind. A breath or so more here. And then when you're ready, gently open the eyes. Wonderful. And start at the top of the mat. Move in a few sun salutation variations. On an inhale, palms come up to the sky, full body stretch. Rounding down into the feet, fingertips to the sky above, shoulders are relaxed, you space around the neck. And as you exhale, bend in the knees, folding from the hip crease and coming all the way down to a forward fold. Hands can come down to the earth or to the shins and inhale, lift out of the spine in a halfway lift. Exhale, folding down, planting the hands and stepping back to a plank pose. We'll hold here for a few breaths, just waking up the front of the body, tapping into that strength. <clears throat> and notice how you feel in your mind that you're in a plank. Are you panicking? Are you thinking this is tough or challenging? Or are you embracing it and thinking, wow, I'm so strong, look what I can do. Then from here, bring the knees down, bend the elbows, chest and chin to the earth. And then inhale, coming up into a little cobra, pulling the shoulders back, opening the throat. Then exhale, seat to heels, downward facing dog. Taking a breath here, equal weight in both hands, grounding into the base of the knuckles, pressing into the fingertips, weight on the inner hand as well. Shoulders are wide, space around the neck. Look forward, walk up, come into a forward fold, engage in the front spine, inhale all the way back up, palms to chest. <clears throat> so one more of these, inhale, a lift up, full body stretch, shoulders down the back, rooting down to rise. Exhale, bend in the knees, coming forward, to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. 
Exhale, plant the hands. Step back into plank and again hold. Shoulders are plugged into, arms rather, plugged into the shoulder sockets. Front of the body is engaged, including the thighs. So strong. And then release the knees, chest and chin. <laughs> Inhale to a cobra. Exhale, seat to heels. Downward facing dog. Taking a breath. Widen in the upper back. Space around the neck. Then look forward and walk up. Forward fold. Inhale all the way back up to the sky. Palms to chest. This time inhale, palms come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back to plank. And then we move the hips up into a downward facing dog. Getting your stable base, hands around shoulder width, feet around hip distance apart. Space around the neck, trapezius relaxed. Inhale, right leg lifts to the sky. And as you exhale, stack in the hips, knee points upwards, releasing the right foot towards the right glute, maybe visualizing that you're going to touch your left shoulder with this right toe. Return to neutral, leg comes straight behind, look forward and step up between the hands. Keeping the left hand grounded, inhale right arm to the sky, pulling the right hip back, but keeping the hips parallel to the earth. Top fingertips to the sky. Breathing deep. Exhale, hand comes down. Step back, downward facing dog. Side B. Inhale, left leg lifts. Stacking the hips. Knee to the sky. Thinking about touching the right shoulder blade with the left big toe. Shoulders are parallel to the earth. Really opening up the hips here. Then neutralizing. Stepping forward. Coming into this low lunge twist. Right hand under right shoulder. Inhale, left arm up to the sky. Keeping the hips parallel to the earth. Strong legs. And the top arm is light as a feather. Exhale, hand comes down. We step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts to the sky. Exhale, right foot steps up. Coming on to the fingertips. Lengthen out of the waist, pulling the right hip back. The left hip forward, grounding down. Inhale, torso comes up. Sukha and Stira. Steady lower body, light upper body. Grounding into this front foot, palms come to the chest. Start to bring all the weight into this front heel. See if you can bring this knee up. Bent leg, one-legged Tadasana. Flexing the left foot, shoulders are down the back. Looking at one focal point. Strength in that standing leg and ease in the body. Then slowly with grace, we step all the way back to a high lunge. Arms come up. Right hand comes behind and reaches for the back of the left thigh. Inhale, lengthen out of the waist for this revolved high lunge twist. Feeling the stretch of the front body. Feels so good. And inhale back to center. Hands come down. Step back, downward facing dog. Taking a free breath. Second side. 
Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left foot steps up between the hands in this low lunge. On an inhale, torso comes up. Strong lower body. Light upper body. Palms come to the chest, grounding all the way into this front heel, preparing to move this back leg forward. One-legged Dadasana with the bent knee. Shoulders are down the back. Chin is parallel to the earth, crown to the sky. Strong standing leg. The elevated leg is light as a feather. Then engage in the core, stepping back with grace to a high lunge. Arms come up and then this left hand finds the back of the right thigh and stretching in this revolved high lunge twist. One of my favorite poses, feels so good. And inhale, we come back to center. Plant the hands, step back, downward facing dog. Take a free breath. Then we'll move on. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, right foot steps up. Low lunge. Inhale to high lunge. Palms come to the chest, grounding into this front heel. We step up again. This time bringing this <coughs> leg into tree. <clears throat> the left sole of the foot is into the right inner thigh. Tall spine, fixed gazing point. Palms can be at the chest. Uh, or a lift. The <laughs> Palms can be at the chest or lift them to the sky. Rooting down to rise. Finding ease in this pose. That equal balance, strength, flexibility. Then palms will come to the chest, knee will come forward. We're moving into warrior three with the palms at the chest. Pivoting at the hip crease, coming forward. Left leg is straight behind, bone straight, keep it engaged. Imagine you're lifting from the inner thigh. Maybe a micro bending the standing leg. And then release back. High lunge. High lunge revolve twist. Right hand to the back of the left thigh. For a moment, we come back up. Hands come down. Downward facing dog. Wonderful. Side B. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left foot steps up between the hands. Stable base. High lunge. Palms to the chest, grounding all the way into this front foot. Using the core to step up. And we come into tree on this left leg. Right sole of the foot to the inner left thigh. Tall spine, palms can be at the chest or lift them up to the sky. Sukha and Stira, ease and strength. And hands come back to the chest, knee comes forward and the transition, warrior three. With palms at the chest, back leg bone straight, toes facing down, heel to the sky, inner thigh engaged, and then with grace release back to a high lunge, revolved high lunge twist, back to high lunge, a step back, Downward facing dog. Take it a free breath. And we'll do that one more time with another little add-on. 
to test the balance. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, right foot steps up. High lunge. Grounding down into the front heel. Up we come. Palms to chest. Tree pose. This time, a lotus at the heart. The knee comes back to neutral, bend into the standing leg, we're coming to eagle. So we're wrapping the left leg on top of the right. You can double wrap if that feels good, or you can use the left toes as a kickstand. Arms come out to a T, left arm underneath right. Eagle wrap. You can double wrap or you can hold the shoulders, whatever feels good. Lifting the elbows. Oh, this is such a good stretch. <laughs> breathing deep core is turned on bending into that standing leg locking those thighs together and the transition from here is to warrior three with eagle arms starting to bring this left knee up and extending back with grace tipping at the hip crease bone straight back leg Eagle arm, warrior three. If you fall out, don't worry. And then step back with grace to an eagle arm, high lunge. Unravel, arms to the sky. Revolved lunge, twist. Back to high lunge. Plant the hands, step back downward facing dog. Last time. Take a free breath and begin. Left leg to sky, left foot steps up between the hands, come up high lunge, nice stable base, particularly in the front foot, palms to chest, one knee to dasana, tree pose, lotus at the heart. If you want to challenge yourself, you can look down into your lotus. And then palms together. Lift the right leg and we cross over for the eagle wrap. Arms come out to a T. Right arm under left this time for eagle arms. Squeezing everything together. And then the transition is to warrior three with eagle arms. Starting to unravel this top leg, extending back in slow motion with grace, full muscle control, full mind control, breathing deep. And then gently step back to a high lunge, keeping this eagle wrap, elbows to the sky and release, arms come up, reverse lunge twist, and then a back to the midline, plant the hands, step back, and downward facing dog, taking a breath, and release the knees to the earth, and just sit back on the heels, palms in the lap, facing upwards, close the eyes, reflect. Notice how you feel, how is your heartbeat? Mine is racing. I have a nice feeling of sweat on the skin. So standing balances, they challenge our muscles and they challenge our minds as well. And they're a perfect kind of pose to embrace those two qualities the strength and the ease. From here, we'll come onto the seat, bringing the legs out in front, feet flat to the floor, hands will be on the 
front of the kneecaps. Lengthen the spine so you're tall. Lean back side and we'll come into boat pose. Your feet can come off the floor. You can keep the toes on the floor. Next version is with the shins parallel to the earth. So balancing on this space at the back of the hips really. Chest is wide and maybe release the arms and hold them in front. So in this pose, are you panicking? Boat is a tough posture. We need strength through it. We also need a bit of balance. Maybe straighten one leg and then the other. And rotate a couple of times, straightening and releasing. Keeping that core turned on, keeping the spine long, keeping the shoulders released, and keeping the mind quiet. And then release down and just curl forward, releasing those hip flexors. We'll come back up. Arms will come straight out in front and we'll release slowly into a low boat, like a canoe shape. Hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. And then release down. Arms come overhead, full body stretch. Toes in the opposite direction. Feels so good. And bring the feet flat to the earth for a bridge pose. Slight variation. Knees are to the sky. The shins are directly underneath the knees. So you have this tall, stable tower shape. Arms come to the sides. On an inhale, lift the pelvis. Hip bones to the sky. Towel bone lengthening towards the back of the knees. Grounding down all the way into the right foot. The left knee comes up, extend the left leg up to the sky, then externally rotate the hip. So your toes are facing maybe towards the outer shoulder. Then bend the knee and place it, the foot on top of the right thigh for a pigeon or a figure four, sorry, bridge. Hips are still going upwards and you're feeling this opening in the left hip here. This is quite a challenging pose, having all the weight on one leg. Notice the breath. Is it keeping steady? Then very slowly lower the hips, keeping the shape. Right foot comes off the floor, so we're in this figure four shape. Imagine that this left hip is pulling away from the armpit. The left foot stays flexed with the ankle active. And this makes the movement come from the hip, I'm not compensating at the ankle. You can hold here, or if it feels good, you can start to rock this shape towards the body. Feeling some release in the hip. And placing the right foot on the floor, keeping the shape, arms come to cactus and allow the shape to fall over to the right side. So your left foot should come to the earth, the sole of the foot. Lift the head mid-air and then look over the left shoulder, releasing the head down. And breathe into the shape. Breathe into where you are feeling the tension and the stretch. And head comes back to neutral. Move this shape back to the midline and then release the left leg. And we'll do that on the other side. Hands come back down by the sides. Equal weight to begin with in both feet. 
feet are underneath the knees. And on an inhale, we lift into bridge. Imagine the tailbone is going towards the backs of the knees, starting to pour all the way into this left foot. The right leg comes up to the sky, straight up. Then rotate the thigh in the hip socket. Flex the foot so the foot is pointing towards the outside of the right shoulder. And then bend the knee. We hook it on the top of this left thigh. Figure four, one-legged bridge. Notice how gravity can help open this right hip where you're suspended in the air, allowing gravity to move it down. Keeping the right hip away from the right armpit. Right foot is flexed, the ankle is active. The stretch is coming from the hip joint. And keeping the shape, slowly lower the hips to the earth. If it feels okay, you can lift the left foot off the floor and bring this shape closer. Maybe rocking a couple of times, backwards and forwards mindfully. <clears throat> not pushing too hard, but not pushing too little. That kind of Goldilocks effect. The space in the middle that is the equal balance between strength and ease. Then settle with this shape, arms come to cactus, and then allow this shape to fall over to the left side, right foot comes flat to the earth, lift the head, rotate it mid air, and then look over the other shoulder, releasing the head down. Notice where you're feeling, I can feel it deep in this right hip, it feels so juicy and good. <laughs> When we do these slower movements in yoga and we pay attention to these areas, it brings us so much body awareness and, you know, when you're doing a hard class, fast pace, and you're throwing yourself between one posture and another, not really any time to think or experience the poses. And I did that for years and I still do that sometimes. But it feels so good when you just take a moment to slow down Find the strength in this stillness, tune into the sensations, and just really observe how you're feeling in your body. How we feel in the body is a reflection of how we feel in our mind. If we're all tense and wound up in the body, we're probably pretty wound up in our minds as well. Then inhale, come back to center, release this foot. Pause for a moment in a constructive rest with the feet as wide as the mat, the knees knocking together. Maybe you can bring the hands to the belly. And this is a great time to think of three things that you're grateful for in your life. Anything will do, no matter how big or small. Appreciate the small moments of joy that you're exposed to. Be thankful for them. Expressing gratitude is a great way to boost your mood. And bring the knees in one by one for a little squeeze and release the legs out into Shavasana. Allow the feet to flop open, palms to the sky, shoulders down the back. And it's sometimes a lot of people find it very difficult to practice Shavasana. I, on many occasions, have, especially practicing at home, have just skipped this. If I've been following a video on YouTube, I just stop it and get up. But again, this is the balance we need. We need to balance out all the activity with a period of relaxation. And when we find balance on the map, we can take it into our real lives and apply the lessons that we learn, finding that sweet spot between strength and softness. I'll leave you here today. Enjoy Shavasana. Stay here for as long as feels necessary for your body, your heart and your mind. Thank you as always for practicing with me and I will see you again soon. Take care.